Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's online debate on obesity, what's tipping the balance. Why are we talking today about obesity and the concept of energy balance? Essentially, energy balance is a relatively straightforward and, and, and easy concept. You're trying to get a balance between how much energy you're getting in via food and drinks and how much energy you're getting out through exercise. We're happy to have, us, um, to have with us a panel of very distinguished scientists and experts in the field of obesity. There is indeed a lot, of, uh, a lot at stake here um, with obesity, which is why we're looking today at the issue and trying to figure out how the concept of energy balance uh, can, help, uh, can help bring this debate forward. I think what has happened, because we've changed the environment and we've basically engineered physical activity out of our lives, we're so sedentary that it looks like food's driving the equation. We know, for example, when you quit moving, your metabolism is negatively affected. You become metabolically inflexible which means you can't use food very well. So if you look at the U.S. situation, where most of the population is sedentary, it very much looks like food is the problem. And you say, well, you can, you can eat 500 calories in five minutes. It takes a long time to burn it off. That isn't the reason physical activity is important. That's one thing. Physical activity sets your metabolism working the way it's supposed to work. The key is physical activity means better quality of life. So if people experience regular physical activity, physical activity, people feel better. So if we link the concept of fun and quality of life to physical activity, people will think that it is convenient to make physical activity. And there are seven best buys in physical activity um, which have come from all the evidence. The first is schools, um, integrated physical activity. The second is transport, where we know that favoring walking and cycling has a major impact on the whole um, community. Urban design to actually make sure that activity is a better option. Um, embedded in healthcare, so that all the long-term conditions of diabetes and for COPD and other conditions all have physical activity built into it. And the doctors and nurses are talking about physical activity. Public education, the mass media, raising the awareness, and then the community-wide programs that we've heard about, getting that whole community built in. And the final one, which is almost like the kind of spice you put onto a, a recipe to make it more um, edible, is the sport. You know, sport has a role. It's not the only role, but sport, if you embed it in a whole lot of physical activity programs, is the excitement, is the part that creates the, the, the local teams and get people watching. So if you put those seven together, you will get a physical active society. We are also strong believers, uh, you know, the fact that you focus in so much on the energy balance by itself may prevent us to have, let's say, a comprehensive understanding in terms of the whole picture. By using energy balance, we may run to the risk of focusing too much on the individual. And we strongly believe, you know, the environmental dimension is of huge importance in terms of the issues of, you know, physical related NCDs and also the, the of course, the challenges of, of obesity. The other thing that's happened is we've added sugar on top of a high-fat diet, and people don't realize fat has nine calories per gram, sugar four calories per gram. You're going to gain weight when you overeat any of these. So sugar for a while, at least uh, from some self-reports, went up. Sugar-sweetened beverages are going down in the U.S. That's the major source of sugar, but there's still, uh, you know, there's still a fair amount of sugar in the population. A clear labeling system and a traffic light or a wheel system works very well because you don't need to be a mathematician to understand the the content of it to know how to make a healthy choice so we would or certainly i would personally promote the use of a of a traffic light system and i think but i think what would help is a standardized system across europe which helps the consumer to make sensible informed choices 
but together with an educational package so that they understand why they might be making those choices. Uh, information for consumers is, of course, very important. Um, you can't, I don't think you can expect, and if you speak to a patient council or a patient advocate, they, they will probably agree with this. I don't think you can expect an individual to calculate uh, figures on complex labeling. And I think, therefore, that a wheel system or the colored traffic light system is something that, that works very well at the population level and it's something that I think should be further uh, promoted. Consumer information is very important, especially for some target population. I think about uh, the economically disadvantaged people who are really, really need more education because most people make some mistakes in nutrition because they do not know that they are doing mistakes. So the education is crucial, is important. And the other thing that is important is to facilitate the healthy choices. I would like to thank um, all of you, the panelists, for joining us today for this uh, online debate. I would like to thank Coca-Cola uh, Europe again uh, for hosting and promoting this debate. Uh, I hope the viewers uh, who've been following us have enjoyed this and uh, hope uh, that we can uh, continue this discussion. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.